If you're about to pick up Gunbreaker for the first time and find it a bit overwhelming to get started, then this video is for you. This guide will teach you how to play Gunbreaker in Endwalker at level 60 specifically, including everything from weapon skills to abilities, but not role actions. We will also cover tanking advice like cooldown cycling. We finish off with an opener and general rotation advice combining all of the things you learn throughout this guide. Now then. Royal Guard serves as your tank stance, greatly boosting your enmity generation, causing enemies to prioritize attacking you over others. This should typically always be turned on, unless you have a co-tank who is going to main tank. Always keeping it on is a nice default if you aren't sure. Next, No Mercy is a crucial part of the Gunbreaker combat rotation, boosting your damage for 20 seconds, once every minute. Gunbreaker relies on this buff to boost the damage of all of its hardest hitting moves to do significant damage in a fight, making the rotation revolve around it. As an ability, No Mercy can be used between your ordinary weapon skills and should, as a rule of thumb, be late weaved outside of specific exceptions. Late weaving refers to using an ability as late as possible between two weapon skills without delaying the next weapon skill, and I have two shorts that explain both the more intricate details of weapon skills and abilities, and adds more detail to the concept of weaving, if you're interested in learning more. Using No Mercy as often as you can is crucial to playing Gunbreaker, and is introduced now as we will keep referring back to it throughout this guide. Next, let's talk about your basic attack combos. Keen Edge, Brutal Shell and Solid Barrel serves as your filler single target combo, or 1-2-3 combo. Brutal Shell offers some healing that also additionally shields you for the same amount, and Solid Barrel produces a cartridge for your powder gauge, which you can use for certain, more powerful attacks. You can store up to two cartridges, and preferably you should only use both of them during the No Mercy window. For Area of Effect, or AoE for short, you have the combo of Demon Slice and Demon Slaughter, where Demon Slaughter produces a cartridge. This combo is superior to your single target combo when there are at least two targets present, and so should be used instead in those cases. Although, if healing is an issue, do remember that Brutal Shell heals you. The fact that this combo is only two steps also means it generates cartridges for you faster. Now for your cartridge spenders. Burst Strike is a simple big swing with no side effects. If your next weapon skill would produce a cartridge, but you already have two, then you can use Burst Strike to spend it without cancelling the combo. During the No Mercy window, you should try to fit as many Burst Strikes as you can on one or two targets. With three or more targets, it is generally better to skip Burst Strike in favor of more AoE combos, even if it means cartridges go entirely to waste. This then leads us to the Gnashing Fang combo, also sometimes known as the Continuation combo. This combo costs one cartridge to start, but then leads into two additional steps for free. While the Gnashing Fang combo does not cancel your basic combos, both of your basic combos will cancel your Gnashing Fang combo. The three steps of the Gnashing Fang combo are Gnashing Fang, Savage Claw, Wicked Talon, and are performed simply by using the Gnashing Fang button repeatedly, as it automatically changes into the follow-up actions. At this level, the Gnashing Fang combo is worth using with up to three targets present. With more targets than that, the AoE combo is superior. The cooldown of the Gnashing Fang combo allows you to use it in every No Mercy window, and an extra time 30 seconds later. This gives rise to a smaller burst window every 30 seconds of course. Let's continue on to your other weapon skills and attacking abilities. Sonic Break is a 1 minute cooldown weapon skill that includes a damage over time component, or DOT for short. This should be used only when you use No Mercy. Due to the mechanic known as Snapshotting, the Dot will benefit from No Mercy for its full duration. Danger Zone is an ability you can use between your weapon skills on a 30 second cooldown. You should use it on cooldown making sure every second one is in the No Mercy window. Danger Zone is also part of the smaller burst alongside the Gnashing Fang combo. Rough Divide is another ability attack, which can hold up to two uses and generates one every 30 seconds, leading to two charges per minute. Given that Rough Divide is a gap closing attack, you should prioritize keeping them for this purpose if you need this movement. If you don't need it, or you aren't certain that you do, you can save both and use them together during No Mercy for a slight damage boost, making sure to weave them between your weapon skills. Generally, I do not recommend using Rough Divide to initiate a fight, as running up to the enemies and using a weapon skill tends to be more effective in most situations, also considering coordination with your party. Combining all of this leads us to the rotation that consists of the No Mercy Burst window, some filler downtime, the small burst window, some filler downtime, and then repeat. 
as at the start of a fight, you often will have no cartridges. Your opening burst will often look slightly different. Now, let's first talk about the No Mercy Burst window. In this window, you want to fit the following listed in order of priority. Gnashing Fang, Sonic Break, the rest of the Gnashing Fang combo, then any burst strikes you can afford. After that, you simply move on to the filler combo. While doing this, you should also weave Danger Zone and any excess rough divides you don't need. Note that you can typically fit two abilities between two weapon skills. With a weapon skill recast timer of 2.50, you can always fit eight weapon skills in the No Mercy window, regardless of whether you late weave it or not. With a recast timer of 2.46 or faster, you can fit nine weapon skills in the window, if you late weave it. As your recast time may vary heavily as you level up and get different equipment, it is recommended to late weave if possible. For an example opener, you can use Keen Edge, Weave No Mercy, Brutal Shell weaving Danger Zone and Rough Divide, Solid Barrel weaving Rough Divide again, Gnashing Fang, Sonic Break, Savage Claw, Wicked Talon, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell and Solid Barrel. With the Solid Barrel at the end fitting inside the window if your recast timer is fast enough. Later on in a fight, you will typically enter No Mercy with at least one cartridge, if not two. In these cases, you should always lead with Gnashing Fang followed by Sonic Break if you can. The purpose behind using these actions immediately in this weird way is to put them both on cooldown as quickly as possible. This is more crucial for the Gnashing Fang combo as you want to use it again outside of No Mercy. It is also more important to use No Mercy and the other cooldowns than to try and line up the perfect time in your 1-3 combos before using it. So I recommend simply following the priority list I stated earlier, and then doing your best to use No Mercy whenever it is available without delay. For the small burst 30 seconds later, you simply use the Gnashing Fang combo and Danger Zone when they are available. Make sure to only use Burst Strike if you're just about to generate a new cartridge and you don't have space for it, or if you are in the No Mercy window. And while nothing else is available, you simply work your way through your 1-2-3 combo repeatedly. Next, let's talk about AoE variations to the rotation. With two targets, the 1-2-3 combo is entirely replaced with the 1-2 AoE combo in all situations. With three or more targets, Burst Strike is also replaced with AoE combos. With four or more targets, the Gnashing Fang combo is also replaced with AoE combos. And with seven or more targets, Sonic Break can also be skipped. Although, even with four or more targets, it may be difficult to find an enemy that will survive the full Sonic Break dot, so at that point you might also simply skip it. Danger Zone and Rough Divide can be used between attacks regardless of the number of targets, as they serve as free damage anyway. Now, let's talk about some of the more tank technical stuff. When pulling enemies, you can use Lightning Shot as a ranged option as its enmity multiplier makes it apply a ridiculous amount of enmity to the target. I recommend pulling with this attack, especially bosses, and if you do, you can weave No Mercy after it and adjust the opener accordingly. Provoke serves as the classic taunting action, placing you at the top of the enmity list and applying an obscene amount of enmity to the target. As it is an ability, you can weave this between other actions if you so desire. However, in content with multiple tanks present, I recommend only using Provoke strategically to switch who is tanking the boss. You can combine Lightning Shot and Provoke to rather easily pull 3-4 to four enemies at range without stopping, which can be very helpful for pulling multiple packs at once. In content with other tanks present, Shirk offers a way to push whoever's currently tanking further ahead, which can be helpful if you prefer to keep Royal Guard on. And finally, let's talk about defensive cooldowns. In Final Fantasy XIV, defensive cooldowns stack multiplicatively, which means using multiple at the same time diminishes the value of each of them. In most content, tanks can survive perfectly fine with just one appropriately powered cooldown running at a time, which gives rise to defensive cooldown cycling keeping at least one defensive cooldown running on you at all times while fighting mobs. Of course, there are exceptions where you need multiple defensive cooldowns at once, but keeping a rule of thumb to only use one at a time is a good starting point. A specific cycling sequence also does not need to be strictly followed, and you can mix and match your cooldowns as you need. If you do wall-to-wall -wall pulls, then you can typically expect one minute cooldowns to be available for every pull, while anything with a cooldown longer than that will only be available for every second pull. As such, it is best to only use one big cooldown for each pull if you can get away with it. As an example of a defensive cooldown cycling sequence, you could use Nebula, then Reprisal, then Camouflage. Then, for the second pull, use Rampart, then Reprisal, then Arm's Length. 
Arm's length is only effective against regular enemies, but can be immensely powerful due to its attack speed reducing effect. The rest of the cooldowns simply have varying degrees of direct damage reduction. Gunbreakers also have access to Aurora, which serves as a potent heal over time effect. This can be very effective if your healer is having a hard time keeping up with the damage, but notably Aurora can also be used on other players, which can be useful to save someone in a tough spot. If you want to learn more about both pulling and defensive cooldown cycling, among other things, I have a video dedicated to teaching some extremely helpful tanking tips that I recommend. Finally, Super Polite is your invulnerability cooldown. While it does make you invulnerable, it also costs you all but one of your HP. For this reason, you should preferably only use this when you are about to die anyway, but if possible, try to plan it with your healer so they don't waste cooldowns themselves due to the timing. A notorious example being using it just a moment after the white mage uses benediction to fully heal you. Also take note that low blow can be helpful to stun regular enemies when needed, and interject can be used to flat out interrupt interruptible actions, which are signified by a red pulsing and flashing cast bar. Now, to round off, let's cover an actual boss fight opener and rotation. Make sure that you have Royal Guard active, unless there is another tank who is using their tank stance, in which case this is optional. As you run up to the boss, pull with the Lightning Shot and Late Weave No Mercy, then use Keen Edge weaving Danger Zone and Rough Divide, Brutal Shell weaving Rough Divide and then Solid Barrel. Then use Gnashing Fang, Sonic Break, Savage Claw and Wicked Talon. Finish up with Keen Edge and Brutal Shell. This then leads to the general rotation. Gunbreaker's rotation revolves around fitting as much damage in your No Mercy window as possible, and then making the most of the few damage cooldowns you have that also come up outside of this burst, with the Gnashing Fang combo and Danger Zone in particular. While everything is on cooldown, you simply go through your 1-2-3 combos, and only use Burst Strike outside of No Mercy if your next combo step is Solid Barrel, and you have two cartridges. No Mercy should then be used on cooldown, which means that exactly when in your 1-3 combo it comes up can vary, and the best way to go about it is to consider a priority list. Whenever you weave No Mercy, use your weapon skills in the following order. 1. Gnashing Fang 2. Sonic Break 3. Savage Claw and Wicked Talon 4. Burst Strike 5. 1-2-3 combo steps while doing this, make sure to use Danger Zone and Rough Divide in between weapon skills for the extra free damage. For AoE adjustments, use Demon Slice and Demon Slaughter in place of the 1-2-3 combo on 2 or more targets, Burst Strike on 3 or more targets and the Gnashing Fang combo on 4 or more targets. Consider also replacing Sonic Break with the AoE combo on 4 or more targets, although if you have a target that will survive the entire dot, Sonic Break is worth using on up to 6 targets. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can make sure to let the YouTube algorithm know by liking the video, leaving a comment, subscribing and hitting the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel like these wonderful people here. Fun fact, all jobs have a 10% chance to parry and parrying prevents 15% of the damage taken. Camouflage increases this to 60%. This makes Camouflage's combined damage reduction equivalent to around 17%, although unlike a Paladin's block, you cannot parry spells.